Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam wa salam, we continue reading from Imam al-Ghazali's Mizan al-Amal, the criterion for action, or rather the criterion of action. And we have reached uh, the Bayan Ummahat al-Fadail, the mother virtues. He said, Rahimahullah, there are many virtues. But they are all embodied by four which contain all their branches and types. These are wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. Wisdom, the hikmah. Is the virtue of the intellective faculty. Courage. Shaja'a is the virtue of the irascible faculty. Temperance, Iffa, is the virtue of the appetitive faculty. And justice, Adl means the occurrence of these faculties in the proper order. Through which all things are made complete. The proper order. This is why it is said that heaven and earth stand upon justice. Ibn Khaldun would uh, he said that Al Adl is the cornerstone of governance. Al Adl asas al mulk. And if there is no ad, there is no justice, then things collapse. I would like to uh, just simply expand just a little bit about, about the justice being uh, the essence, the cornerstone of uh, governance of, of a state, if you will, any institution, a family, a country, Adl is the uh, is a prerequisite for uh, its survival. Um, when the emissary, like an amb like an ambassador today, came from Persia um, to meet with uh, this is Umar al Khattab, uh, he was told that emissary that uh, Umar al Khattab was sleeping under the tree. That emissary uh, said three words that sh these three words should be written uh, with gold. Uh, the, the idea is to uh, entrench these three words deep in our uh, psyche. Uh, in Arabic, these are three words. In English, you, you probably need uh, five words for each Arabic word at any rate. Adalta. فَأَمِنْتَ فَنِمْتَ you, uh, you have been just, you must have been just. He was explaining to himself why Umar would sleep just like this. This is the, the Khalifa, this is the Amir Mu'mineen. So you must have been just, therefore you felt secure, and ultimately you slept. So the order is justice, then security. And look around the world, how things are collapsing. The politicians would like to reach security without justice. 
thousands of papers, conferences, seminars, lectures, books, articles, interviews, and on and on. And they would like to address security, 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 security. But nary a word about justice. Let us explain, remember that it continues, each of these mother two virtues, then develop it and examine the other types of virtues that are included within it. By wisdom, we mean that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extols when he says, he who, who is given wisdom has been given much good. And of which the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Wisdom is the lost stray of the believer. Al Hikmatu Dalatu Al Mu'min. The whole uh, hadith Al Hikmatu Dalat Al Mu'min. Fahithu Wajudaha for Hakubiha. Fahanna. Probably a more popular, but this is the text that we have. Um, the actual text, Faman Wajadaha, but there are other variations. Fanna Wajadaha, Hakubiha, etc. Now, this is not a sound tradition, but the meaning is absolutely right. It's not a sound tradition. Some scholars said it is weak, some scholars said it is very weak. But the meaning is absolutely right. Wisdom is the uh, is what the believer is uh, seeking. The, this is really the uh, as if it is lost, and the uh, and the believer is seeking it, is looking, you know, uh, for it. Yes, it is attributed to the intellective faculty. As we have seen, the soul has two faculties. One faces upwards, pertaining to the realities of essential, theoretical universal knowledge from the Supreme Assembly. This means, this means the knowledge that is certain and true always and forever and does not differ with times or people such as knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his, his qualities, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the kinds of his creation in the world. So knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe his attributes rather than qualities, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the kinds of his creation in the, uh, in the world. It also includes such knowledge as the law of non-contradiction and other real knowledge. These forms of knowledge are real wisdom. The second faculty faces downwards in the uh, direction of the body. By the way, the law of non-contradiction just simply you cannot attribute two opposite things uh, to the same object, if you will, at the same at the same time. The second faculty faces downwards in the direction of the body and its management and direction. By it, the soul perceives goodness in action, whence it is called the practical intellect. The individual manages the faculties of his, of his soul through it, and also the people of his land and his household. It can only metaphorically be called wisdom, since its objects are mercurial, uh, slippery, you know, in a sense, uh, always changing and never remaining stable. Its objects include such things as the knowledge that giving away money is a virtue. 
but can become a vice at certain times and for certain people. The name virtue applies by right to the first faculty and to the second as a sort of perfection and com complement of the first. This is moral wisdom, while the former is theoretical wisdom. When uh, one of them will uh, will explain furthermore the uh, issue of uh, of expenditure, uh, how one should really. Uh, uh, control himself if he spends uh, if he spends too much uh, and the opposite is also uh, problematic if he uh, does not spend uh, because uh, typically a virtue a virtue falls between two uh, vices two extremes uh, one is excess and the other is deficiency. So the right, uh, the right uh, expenditure, depending, and of course, what is what is uh, median, what is uh, middle path, what is virtue uh, for someone uh, is should numerically should not be the same as someone who does not have the same income, does not have the same fortune. So uh, neither uh, being a spendthrift nor being uh, uh, a miser, stingy. And of course, uh, always remember that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq brought all his money uh, for the sake of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All his money, the Prophet asked him, what did you leave? for your uh, family, he said, I left Allah and his messenger. In such cases, it is still a virtue. By moral wisdom, we mean a state and virtue of the rational soul by which it governs the irascible and appetitive faculties. and whose motions decree the proper degree of contradiction and expansion. It is knowledge of right action. This virtue lies between two vices, deceit and stupidity, which are the extremes of excess and deficiency on either side of it. This is uh, in Arabic. We have more than one word for uh, uh, deceit, and in uh, Imam Ghazali used khib. Uh, the khib is uh, to be deceitful, to be uh, cunning, to be. Uh, shrewd also to be all these together and uh, there is a famous uh, statement using the word khib uh, in fact uh, twice by Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab Arba'an he said لَسْتُ بِالْخِبُ وَلَالْخِبُ يَخْدَعُنِي I'm not deceitful but the same time, at the same time he said but I don't allow a deceitful person to deceive me. This is why people who would like to assume office, public office to serve people, it's not for everyone. It's not for the naive, it's not for the faint-hearted. Faint There's a big difference between someone who was raised like he, someone who uh, witnessed uh, 
not really watching things on TV, but say that someone who saw his father, who uh, is like from a royal family, uh, who's very close to decision making from early stage, they have been prepared. Uh, they know, um, they know what diplomacy is, they know what management is, they know uh, what uh, decision making under stress is unlike someone who decides to go into politics simply because he uh, accumulated wealth at you know towards the end of his life he has uh, you know not much to uh, uh, to do and out of a sudden you know you just go into uh, into politics it's disastrous deceit is its excessive extreme it is a state wherein man is characterized by cunning and trickery because his irascible and repetitive uh, faculties are allowed to move towards the desired object to a greater extent than is necessary stupidity is the extreme of deficiency and lack of equilibrium it is a state of the soul wherein the irascible and repetitive faculties are prevented from reaching their necessary due. It manifests, it manifests, its, oh, it, it manifests in slowness of mind and a limited capacity for identifying right action. Courage is the virtue of the irascible faculty. It denotes that this faculty is strong, and that along with the zealous faculty it is in conformity to the intellect which instructs it to advance or withdraw according to revelation it lies midway between two vices that surround it recklessness and cowardice recklessness is the extreme that exceeds equilibrium it is the state wherein man advances towards perilous matters that the intellect knows ought to be avoided. Cowardice is the extreme that falls short of equilibrium. It is the state where an irascibility is insufficiently stirred, stirred so that man does not advance when he ought to. When these faculties are attained, their corresponding actions will issue forth. Courage will give way to advancement where it is required. And as it is required, this is the good and praiseworthy trait of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, stand against the disbelievers, merciful, to one another. Sometimes, like nowadays, we see it the other way around. They could be stand against one another and merciful to the uh, disbeliever. That's not a good uh, character. From a position of strength to be sometimes merciful to one another and maybe also merciful to the disbeliever part of Dawa. Uh, Sternness is not praiseworthy in every situation, but only when it accords with the standard of the intellect and revelation. This really explains it. The one who attains this should preserve it by being diligent in keeping to its corresponding actions. The one who has not attained it should reflect on himself. If his nature declines towards deficiency, which here means cowardice, he should have it weight himself uh, to, uh, 
to the deeds of the courageous and keep to them diligently until it becomes a natural habit and trait of his whereafter the deeds of courage will flow will flow from him naturally if on the other hand he finds himself naturally inclined towards the excessive extreme which is recklessness he should make himself aware of the ultimate ends of things and be wary of their dangers. He should force himself to withdraw to equilibrium or somewhere close to it. For it is a daunting prospect to, de to determine the exact point of equilibrium. Indeed, if it were possible to do so, the soul would leave the body behind altogether and have no further connection to it, with it, and would not be tormented at all by sorrow for its loss, nor disturbed by or in its ex exaltation in the beauty and majesty of the real that would be disclosed to it. Yet because of how daunting this is, it is said, there is not one of you but shall come to it. وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًا The beauty and majesty of the real, this is referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is related that one of the spiritual masters saw the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a dream and asked him the meaning of his statement the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam my hair was turned white by Hud and its sister surahs it's it's very famous uh, hadith shayyabatni surat Hud my hair turned white gray uh, by uh, by the surah of uh, of Hud and his sisters وأخواتها. there is a, a similar hadith with uh, with the, the with some details about these sister surahs it does uh, mention them shayabatni uh, Hud والواقع والمرسلات وعما يتساءلون وإذا الشمس كورت this is uh, this is the uh, hadith narrated by Tirmidhi the first one about uh, Hud and his sisters uh, narrated by Tabarani the uh, the spiritual master who uh, saw the Messenger of Allah in uh, وسلم, in a dream is Abu Ali uh, is Sari. This is from Tafsir Al Qurtabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'la wa a'lam. What this means is that continuing down the straight path and seeking the middle point between these extremes is extremely difficult. It is finer than a hair and sharper than a sword, as goes the traditional description of the bridge over hell in the hereafter. The one who walks upright upon the path in the here below will walk upright across the bridge in the hereafter. For a man dies even as he lived and is resurrected even as he died. This is why it is obligatory to recite in every cycle of the prayers of the, in the prayer Allah's words guide us upon the straight path. This is the most complex and challenging thing for the seeker. Responsible for attaining it for a single trait 
would be demanding enough, yet we are held responsible for attaining it in all of our traits. Though they are countless, as we shall see, there is no escape from these perils except by the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the Prophet sallallahu said, all people are dead except those with knowledge. All people of knowledge are dead except those who are, except those who act, act upon their knowledge. All those who act are dead except the sincere and the sincere and great are in great peril. First of all, uh, we have two uh, references. In both cases, they don't attribute the uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu as uh, uh, Al Bayhaqi uh, reported it in Shab al Iman uh, and attributed it to uh, the Nun al Masri and Al uh, Khatib al Baghdadi in Iqtada al Ilm al Amal. He attributed it to Sahel bin Abdullah Tastri. But one can uh, detect the, uh, uh, the meaning that without knowledge, people are, uh, their life is in vain, they're, uh, they are destroying themselves. And those with knowledge, if they don't act, then it's the same thing, it's in vain. The knowledge without action, it's in vain. And those who act without sincerity, it is still in vain. And those who are sincere, they are still, they have a certain degree of uh, danger. We are uh, halfway through this uh, chapter, and I think, inshallah, we will uh, continue with this uh, tomorrow, inshallah. Until then, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashhadu ala nasafiruka wa natubu alaykum, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.